are you looking around your house and you're wondering to yourself, should I move? Well, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm April. And I'm Jean. We love helping first time sellers sell their home and buy their next one. That's right. In today's video, we're going to give you all the helpful information that you need to know and understand while asking yourself the question, should I move? But make sure you stay tuned to the end because we're going to give you the top three financial questions you need to ask yourself when you're thinking, should I move? <laughs> That's right. So let's just talk about your current house. So your lifestyle has drastically changed. You maybe have a two bedroom, one bath, and now everything is getting a little bit smaller. Maybe you've gotten a couple dogs. You've maybe started working from home, got married, had some kids. Picked think, up some hobbies. Picked up some <laughs> hobbies. Everything's starting to shrink in on you, and you're wondering, is this the right time to move, and should I move, or should I maybe update? Yeah. So we're going to kind of break that down today. Well, if you decide to move, it's going to be a little different than when you bought your first home. So when you bought your first home, you were probably renting and you could just wait for your lease to end and move in. Um, now you're going to have a home to sell and you're going to need to buy another home and you're going to need to time it just right so that you don't end up with no home or with two homes for too long. Yeah, and we understand that this can be super nerve wracking. There's just a lot to time and a lot of things to decide and go over, but we're gonna help you go through that today. So let's get into it. So one thing that we wanna know and we want you to think about is what's not working in the home that you have right now. That's very important. And in, we want you to understand the why. Why are those things not working for you? Exactly, because you bought your first home and you've lived in there for a while, you now know what works, what doesn't work. So when you go find your next home, you know what you're looking for. So maybe you just need to do some updates to the house you have. Maybe mm -hmm. what's not working could just be fixed at your house you have right now. Maybe it's just, you know, adding another vanity in the bathroom that has two sinks instead of one. Um, it could be just an easy update. Yeah, reconfiguring your, chick your kitchen yeah. and just kind of changing things around. And you can always paint and put new flooring in. Yeah, those things are easy. But the other things that happen in our lives is like your yard gets too small because you did adopt two big dogs and maybe you're tired of parking on the street and you wish you had a garage. Um, and your lot isn't big enough to put a garage Your lot's in, not maybe. big enough. Yeah. Or maybe you need another bedroom and you can't really add on again because the lot's too small. Or maybe you just need to change locations for a uh, school district or you would like to be out in the country and have a little acreage. Exactly. Um, so. You also want to keep in mind if you decide you want to update to not update yourself nicer than every house in your neighborhood and i know you're probably saying why i'll have the nicest house yes you will but when you do decide to sell somebody else can come into your neighborhood and buy a house that's similar to yours probably similar size to yours and buy a lot less that doesn't have all the updates that you have done so you want to make sure that you keep within what the neighborhood is doing yes Speaking to a professional, they can help you do that. They can run some average sale prices, the homes that have sold in your neighborhood in the last few months, and give you some interior pictures. Because this is actually what investors do. They look at the inside of all the homes in the neighborhood, and you never want to over improve, which means you don't want to be the most expensive home on the block. Um, a good example of this, and it's just a real simple one, is countertops. So a lot of homes in a certain neighborhood, every home has laminate countertops there is no need to over improve and put nicer countertops in such as granite or solid, solid surface, surface right. um, unless you absolutely want to, but for resale value, it's not required. So that is one example of that. Exactly, and that leads to our doesn't make financial sense. That's something you gotta think through. Does it make financial sense for you to update your home? Or does it make more financial sense to take that money that you would have spent updating and put it towards your next home? It doesn't always make financial sense to update or to move. We have clients who thought they were ready. Yeah. And then they yeah. weren't. <laughs> yeah. So we just, sometimes uh, people get excited about the thought of moving and we get it. We want, you know, oh, yeah. you, you're living in this small house. So we had a client and she bought the home when she was single. It was a two bedroom, one bath home. And then she got married. They adopted a couple of dogs, like everybody oh, does yes. when they get their first house, right? That's all fun to get the pets and everything. Exactly. And then they had a baby. So that two bedroom, one bath house got small very, very fast. And they were ready to move on and have their family grow. And so they wanted to find a home in a certain area. But what we quickly found out was where they were wanting to purchase, they didn't have the budget for it. So we made a few suggestion, suggestions, things like, 
you know, paying down some debt um, and paying off some credit. And also he had an opportunity to get another job. So we had to take a little bit of a break and he was able to get that job, which allowed him more income and he got a, was able to have a larger budget. So he right. could afford a larger monthly payment. And then that got them into that area. I was about to say, so what happened after their break? Yeah, <laughs> it got them into the house that they wanted. And the bonus is they did have another baby. Aww. So that was super exciting. <laughs> Well, that leads us to that bonus that we promised you, the top three questions you want to ask yourself about your finances when you're thinking about moving. Number one is how much is your home worth and how much do you still owe on it? We are finding that the sweet spot is about three years of paying your loan down that you will start to actually pay the loan. The first couple of years you're paying just interest and then after that you do start paying your principal down a bit. Yes, and so that equity help that you uh, gathered into your home is going to help you propel you to the next level, which would be buying your next home. And so by having the additional equity, you're gonna be able to cover your closing costs and your down payments. And it is actually going to help with some other things. So like the changes we've seen in the market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the past few years, we have seen double digit appreciation in home prices. Um, I'm sure you have seen it in your neighborhood that housing is at least 10% higher than it was a few years mm -hmm. ago. Um, we also had the rates raised last year, so we also have that going on. So that equity that you have in your home now from the double digit depreciation will help you with the rates because you can either buy down mm -hmm. some rates, you'll have more money to put into your loan so you don't have to take as large of a loan, which means that will save you some money. So there are just some different ways that that will work out better for you. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing you have to consider is can you afford a, a higher monthly payment? So this area that you want to move into, just like our clients, can you afford to move into that area? And you probably should expect that you're going to have to pay a little bit more monthly to get into that school district that you need to get additional acreage because you want to move out and have a little room to roam around. Those things are going to cost you more in a monthly payment and that budget is very important. It is because sometimes we think that we can get into that school district, that larger yard, whatever, for just a little bit more. more. But turns out sometimes it's a lot more. So in Kent County right now in the spring of 2023, Rockford, the average home price is $450,000. Lowell, you're looking at $397,000. Grand Rapids, you're at $268,000. Now, if you go out a little further, still a good commute. But Ionia, you're at $195,000. So depending on what you want and the area you want, you are looking at very different amounts of money. Exactly. And so our next point, number three, is how is your financial fitness? So we got to talk about that. And yes, your finances have to be in tip-top shape. That's right, because when you go for your next pre-approval, your lender is going to ask you things like, do you have steady employment? Now that means, have you changed jobs recently? Have you gone from a salary job to a commission paid job? Um, are you full-time? Are you self-employed? Those all make a difference. Yeah, and even if you've uh, changed your career path, that's huge. Like a lot of lenders, if you take and uh, change career paths, you're going to have to have two years of income in that career. So that can even be a, a big stopping point for some Absolutely. people getting financing. Absolutely. And debt. Let's talk about mm. debt. That thing nobody wants to talk about. Right. Um, you're going to need to tell your lender about your current debt. They are going to use your monthly expenses and base that off of your income and come up with your debt to income ratio. You want to keep that low because that's how you're going to qualify for better rates. Even with the new rules that have come out, you still will get better rates if you keep your student loan and your car loans and all these things at a lower rate based on your income. Yes, and also keeping your payments current and regular and paying everything on time is going to be vital for you to get better interest rates. So Absolutely. keep up the credit, keep up, get, keep your debt down, and um, that's going to help you get all your financing in order that way. Yep, so now that you know your why you want to move, you're figuring out if it makes financial sense, you know if you're financially ready personally to move, you should be able to answer that question, should I move? And if the answer is yes, then you should check out the next video where we unlock the financial mystery of buy first or sell first, the financial dilemma.